Uh, my name is George Scufellos, and I'm part of Team 11. I worked with five other mechanical engineers on our senior design capstone project uh, with the help of Professor Hauser, and our project was to design a regenerative cooling nozzle. Um, before getting into what exactly it is that we did and how we did it, I'd like to talk about the people we worked with. Um, our customer was the Boston University Rocket Propulsion Group, headed by David Armour Harris, and like I said before, my, our advisor was Professor Hauser. We also got guidance from um, a bunch of other professors. Professor Nagam helped us in thermodynamics. <coughs> Professor Fine helped us in material selection, uh, which you can't see there. Uh, Caleb Farney helped us in testing procedure. And then there are two people at the shop, Joe Stano and um, Bob Shostrom, who helped us in manufacturing. So our design statement is to conduct research and design generative, regenerative cooling nozzle for BRPG's MK2B rocket, while also creating a user-friendly model for further research by BRPG. This is a very broad uh, design statement. And because of that, we created four success points with a BRPG to make sure that we're using our time um, productively. Our first success point was to make this user-friendly MATLAB model. The idea behind it is that BRPG can take it and test a bunch of different designs that they have, and then go ahead and um, use a higher computational tool to really see whether their designs will work. Uh, our next success point was to actually meet CAD for it and then be able to manufacture it, which is the third success point to make a prototype. And then finally, we wanted to test whether N2O can be used as a coolant. Um, before getting into the work we did, this is a nozzle. Um, this is what we designed. Not this one specifically. Ours is a lot smaller. Ours is just like two inches by two inches. Uh, but the idea is that in a rocket, all the fire and flame come out of the nozzle. And because it gets really hot, um, there's a lot of damage in there. It can melt or get um, deformed. And because of this, we want to make sure it stays cold, which we do with regenerative cooling. Uh, so what is regenerative cooling? This over there on the right side is our nozzle. Um, it's, like I said, about two inches by two inches. And the idea with cooling is that we're going to pass something really cold, so fluid, um, around the nozzle to make sure that it stays cold. Uh, it's called regenerative cooling because we can use either the oxidizer or the fuel in a rocket. Um, oxidizer plus fuel make propellant, which makes all the flames. Uh, so we can use either the oxidizer or the fuel to make sure that it stays cold. And then as you can see from the path over there, it goes back into the combustion chamber to make all the flames and make the rocket go up. Um, <clears throat> so we started out uh, with this. BRPG gave us the inner profile of the nozzle uh, because they, it's pretty complicated. It looks simple, uh, but it's pretty complicated to calculate, and they had already done that for us. They also gave us the temperatures that we'll be experiencing, as well as the heat transfer coefficients, which means it's just a number to show how fast um, things would get hot. Uh, and like, for example, you can see down there in the middle, it gets really hot really fast. Um, Another thing we considered is that we're designing for a student group. We have a $400 uh, budget from mechanical engineering, but we had a theoretical budget of $2,000. Uh, this just means that if we design something that takes $2,000 to make, they're OK with that, um, and we're good to go. And they also have limitations in manufacturing, because here at BU, BRPG can only make parts from the BU facilities. And while we have a lot of machines, it's not, um, it's not perfect, and we can't do whatever we want. And then finally, they wanted us to use N2O as a coolant. This is because they already use it in the rockets and be really convenient. Um, and I'll talk about why we can't or can't do that. <clears throat> Before designing, we looked into what already exists. And we found that there are four ways to, um, that people like to uh, make regenerative cooling nozzles. The first one is circular tubes. So you can just imagine the nozzle and circular tubes that just run up and down the length of the nozzle. The next one is a square tube. And the idea with that is that there's a more surface area closer to the, uh, the hot wall on the inside, so it cools faster. Um, next, we th uh, thought about a spiraling tube, which is just a coil around the nozzle. Um, and then finally, the corrugated pathways. You can just imagine a sheet of metal that's like really wavy, and you wrap around uh, that around a nozzle um, and pass the fluid through it. This is the best technique because it provides a lot of surface area for the cooling, um, but it's also very hard to do. And finally, like I said before, um, we have to use the fuel or the oxidizer because this is what makes it regenerative cooling. <clears throat> there were three areas where we had design liberty. Uh, one is the channels we're going to use, two, what our um, nozzle would be made out of, and three, what coolant we're going to use to make sure that it stays cold. Uh, like I said before, we had the um, limitations in cost and manufacturability. And we, these are the things we considered and how we chose. So for the first one, we couldn't use square tubes because since it's so small, they're really hard to make. Uh, if it was bigger, we could do that easier because you know, the drills um, would be better fitted for that. 
Uh, the spiraling tube, we found that it exposes the coolant for too long and makes it reach the supercritical temperature, which just means that it gets way too hot um, and that we don't know how it's going to act past a certain temperature. So we can't use that. And finally, the corrugated jacket that I talked about, um, it's really hard to make. And even though it's the best technique probably for BRPG, um, we thought that the circular tubes are better. Then for the material, there are three that we considered. All three of these work, but aluminum is the cheapest, uh, so we use that one. And then for the coolants, we started with N2O, which is what BRPG wanted, but we found that it doesn't work because it gets too hot. So then we went into ammonia, which they also use. Um, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. OK, um, there we go. Um, so yeah, we used ammonia. So our first result was this MATLAB user-friendly model. On the right side, you can see all the things you can change. You can change the coolant. You can change the material and what your channel geometry looks like. We also um, included square channels there that you can't see right now because it's not chosen. Um, but that's a nice little tool that we have. And the idea, like I said before, is that they can punch in a bunch of designs, see which ones work best. And on the left side, you can see four plots. The top two are temperature. Uh, the third one in here is stress, which just means that when things get really hot, they experience a certain stress that can cause them to deform. So we want to make sure that the stress isn't too much for the nozzle. <coughs> and the final one that wasn't ready at the time is just the heat map. So like all those pretty colorful maps that you see that show how hot things get, that's what we have there. Um, but it wasn't ready at the time. And this is how our MATLAB model works. Here on the left side, you can see the nozzle. So we're looking at it from the top. Um, and that little circle is where the fluid comes out of. Um, this big circle here is where all the flames are. And this is the outside. So the heat will go from hot to cold. And what we have made on the right side is a circuit that shows all the paths that the heat can take um, to get to the coldest part. So we have the temperatures, some of them that we know and some that we're solving for. And we also have what's called a thermal resistance. Thermal resistances we get from the material properties. And what they show us is how fast heat is going to travel through, um, through matter. So knowing the thermal resistances and the material properties, as well as the temperatures, we're able to solve for all the other temperatures. So now imagine a very thin cylindrical slice and millions of these <coughs> stacked on top of each other. Once we solve for all the temperatures on the first one, we can go on to the second one, the third one, and figure out all the temperatures, which is what you see here on the maps, on the graph, sorry. Um, <coughs> once we had a good design that we liked, we started doing some catting. Um, on the right side, you can see the cross-sectional area. You can kind of see the um, channels here. And then this one is the same thing, but from the side. And what you can see up here, these two are the manifolds. So the fluid comes in through a hole, it goes around this manifold, and then starts pouring down the channels. Um, and then it's collected back to the bottom manifold and taken out into the combustion chamber. Um, you can see the holes that we use here and here. Uh, they're standard fluid holes that uh, BRPG wanted us to use. You can also see we have O-rings in there to make sure that none of the fluid comes out of. And this is just our first prototype. The idea was to kind of see what it looks like, see if it works, what we forgot to do. Um, our second iteration is a little bigger. Uh, it takes the sealant a little better um, and the O-rings inside. And then the, um, this one here we made just to kind of see what it looks like inside. We also thought about doing some water testing to see that it works, uh, but we haven't done that yet. Uh, again, this is just the same prototype but from the side. You can see the channels. So there's about 12 of them around the radius. and. Yeah, our final steps, what we want to do is compare our data to existing data to make sure that what we've done um, is right and that to reassure a customer that we didn't do it wrong. The first one is the CFD and CHD analysis. So this is just like a really fancy computer program that does our work, but a lot better. Um, and from those results, which we just got yesterday, we can show that our model really correlates to the right data. Um, we also are comparing our results to real life cases that other people have done before. Again, the same principle, just to make sure that it all works right. And then finally, we want to do some water testing. The idea here is that as the fluid goes in, we want to make sure that it doesn't just go down some channels and it goes down all the channels so that it's distributed evenly. Um, but it requires a lot. It's like three gallons per second of intake. And because of that, we can't really do it at BU. But the nice thing is that we believe that at three gallons per second, it'll work just fine. I don't know what. That is. Um, so yeah, thank you for your time, and I'll try to fix this, maybe. Uh, do you have any questions or anything? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, any questions? Cool, thank you.
thank you. Oh, well. Um, because it was another suggestion by BRPG. Uh, they thought it was a good idea. They use it in the rockets already as fuel. Um, so we decided to do that. And it also works as a really good coolant. Um, so it's really convenient. Anything else? Thank you.